Okay, after you run our part dot plot and you put in the decision tree object um, here in line 27 in the code and you execute it, you'll get this plot. And if you'd like to zoom into it to see it better, um, this is the whole story that decision tree would like to tell us. Uh, let me get the annotate tool here. And what it actually tells us is this. Um, this is the root node that we have. And as you can see, it includes all 100% of my total uh, train data set uh, passenger information. Uh, this is where we start. And it labels it as node because it says that only 32% of the entire population are alive. That's why it labels it as a no node, okay? Um, and the first feature that got selected on splitting information is the sex column, All right? If the sex column, if the sex information is male, it goes to the left. And if the sex information is female, it goes to the right, okay? Um, this decision tree, anytime a branching occurs, the left indicates yes, as in this case, and right indicates no, as in this case, okay? So, let me label these and then I will come back to them later. So first we are going to speak about this yes category where actually um, um, these are male passengers. And what we see here on the next child node, we do see that this category is labeled as no because 21% only survived. That is less than the 50% the cutoff point. Okay, and this data uh, has the 79% of the entire population in the training data set, okay? All right, so um, the decision tree uh, did not want to move further or branch out out of this based on other information. Um, that's where it stopped and therefore this is a child node at the same, at the same time, this is the end node, okay? There's no branching out further from this, from this category. On the other hand, if you go to the females where sex male is, not, is a no, right? Um, we do have the decision to relabel this as uh, as yes category. That's because 71% of the females survived, okay? And 21% indicates that um, those 21% uh, is basically the percentage of females in the, in the passenger ship or in the train data set, okay? Um, so um, it further branched out based on the class information, right? So as, you, as, I, as I said, so if you go to the right, it means that it's a no. If the class side, class information is not third, anything else, first, second, or fourth, if there was any fourth category, then we go to the right, right? If the class size is not third, there's a much better chance that a passenger is going to survive. Actually. 91% of those passengers who are female and who did not belong to the third category got survived, okay? And that is actually just the 12% of the entire data set or the train data set. On the other hand, if your class, if you are a female, if, if, if your passenger is a female and it belongs to the third category, well, only, only 48, 47% of them got survived. Therefore, it got labeled as no category, okay? And that only includes 9% of the entire uh, train data sets passenger information. Well, this is a very nice way of, you know, visualizing your decisions and uh, imagine that you're um, categorizing your customers or uh, your demands or your orders or whatever your interest is based on this decision tree. It helps you make um, the best business uh, decisions and it helps you visualize it. It helps it helps you categorize it. Um, it's a nice feature to have for sure, and it is very simple to do it in R. And this is just a train data set. All right, let's continue with our test data set. Let me get rid of uh, the zoom, and we will continue. Um, I um, there is also another way to you know make this uh, uh, graph a little bit different. I actually use this extra equals to 104. 104 is not a special number. It can be any number greater than 100. Uh, if you run this, you will see the difference. Uh, if you execute this, you will see, and you can take a zoom into it. You see that um, this makes this uh, charting tool 
um, demonstrating this um, yes and no person pushes at every node. So you can clearly see that this 68% did not show why 32% did show why. It's much easier to actually tell you what's going on, all right? Um, okay, so let's also um, run our uh, tra uh, trained um, decision tree model called Titanic underscore classification underscore tree on, on, on the train data to make predictions, okay? All right, we did that. We looked into predictions. Now this is just a way of creating a confusion matrix. You already know that. And let's do that. Um, one thing that you should be careful is actually, well actually, we are going to be using these two packages to call confusion matrix. You should have installed them. If not, make sure that you install these two packages and then load them into, into R and time confusion matrix. We see that on the train data, the accuracy of this decision tree model is 78%. And we do look at the sensitivity and specificity. Specificity is very low because I think the decision tree is not really doing a good job in predicting the survived um, people. Um, you can actually see it here. Um, overall, let me get the MIT tool. Uh, here, if you careful look at this column, you see that those are actually survived in people information. Um, are, for example, look at this category. It is 327 of the people actually survived, but we predicted them as not survived, right? Um, and we only captured the survived uh, passenger information of 172 of them correctly uh, out of 330, 20, 27 plus 172, right? Uh, only 172 of them got labeled as survived based on our um, algorithm. And this weakness is indicated in the specific information here. And overall, yes, accuracy is high, but it should not really mislead, mislead you to conclude that this is a very, very useful um, uh, decision tree. Um, it is actually useful in categorizing um, passengers who did not survive, but it's not really doing a good job on the passengers who survived. Okay, let's see what the performance is, is on, the, on the test data. Um, let me see. We do have the predictions on the test data. Here. Um, test prediction predict when you say, um, if you like to work on, if you like to make your predictions work on the test data, there has to be a new feature called new data equals to test and type as class again, you make sure that you call the Titanic classification tree. Um, you run it line 49 and line 50, and then you create a confusion matrix, and then you look at the specificity and sensitivity information. It is still around 78% overall accuracy. And you see that again on the on the on the on the survived patients, the model is not doing really that much a good job as it does on the no category. Okay, so uh, overall accuracy is again good. Um, it's around 80%, but specificity is low because it is actually suffering in differentiating survived um, passengers from um, not survived passengers. So that's one thing that you should be careful about. All right, this will be the end of this example. And on the next video, you will see another implementation of decision trees on a different example.